Well, if you're new to Journey, I just want to let you know a few things about uh, a Journey, uh, and that is, we, we say this from time to time, but I thought this would be a great time to kind of bring it up. Uh, we have some sayings around here, and that is simply this, that everyone is welcome at Journey. And what I mean by that is it doesn't matter uh, who you are or how much experience in church or religion or spirituality you have, how much you know about the Bible or don't know about the Bible. It really doesn't even matter if you believe in God or not. Everybody is welcome at Journey. We, we are a place where you can come through our doors. It doesn't make any difference and there's no judgment. Just everybody's welcome. And the reason why we don't want to judge anybody who comes through, and if you have doubts and questions, hey, that's cool. We're just glad you showed up. We're glad that you're here. But we really believe that everyone's welcome because nobody's perfect. Like everybody is messed up. So I just got to, if you like are new, I'm just telling you, if you are new to Journey, I want to, I want to, if this is your first time here, maybe second time here, I just want you to know who you're sitting next to. All right. I really honestly. And uh, so when I call you out, just raise your hand. Uh, We have people, no, I'm just kidding. Don't raise your hand to any of these. All right. Let's start with adultery for, you know, um, <laughs> let's not do that. Uh, we have people that are sitting right around you that are really insecure about a lot of things in life. And when you're insecure, it just messes up everything, right? We have people uh, that are sitting around you that they're just really prideful about stuff. We have other people that are materialistic. We have people who are liars. We have people who are thieves. We have people who are addicts of one sort or another, and that's just, that's just who fills our church. Don't you feel good about who you're sitting next to now? <laughs> and yet, here's the crazy thing about this. And yet, the people who are sitting next to you, the same people, are some of the most kind-hearted, patient, thoughtful, selfless, go to the mat for anybody, give the shirt off their back to somebody, people that you'll ever meet in the world. It's just an amazing thing, <laughs> right? And so, uh, you know, when you, when you walk in, I just want you to know, man, we are all messed up. Everybody's got to struggle with something. And some people, the good news is some people are less stingy than they used to be. They're more generous today than they were five years ago. And they, you know, some of the people who are really prideful, they're learning to walk more in humility and things are happening in their life. And that's a wonderful thing. But I just want you to know that you are welcomed here because everybody here is not perfect. Nobody's perfect. Make you feel good? Yeah. And then, here's the thing. Here's the other thing that we believe. We believe that anything is possible. Anything is possible. Say anything's possible. Anything is possible. We get to see this all of the time. We get to see people who are lonely, and they've been lonely for years and years and years, and through Jesus and through his church, they're finding community for the first time, real friendships, real connection with people. We're finding that all the time. We're finding people who are insecure. They're growing in their security. They're growing uh, in ways that they had never grown before. We're finding people who have struggled with addiction be freed from those addictions. We're finding people who have been broken in relationships, those relationships being stored. We're finding that Jesus, through the power of Jesus, things are happening that would not happen outside of his miraculous work in our lives. And we believe that anything is possible in your life. And maybe you walked in here today and you're going through a difficult time. Maybe it is the darkest season of your life. And you've lost all hope. I just need you to know something. You need to keep coming back because you're around a group of people who know and believe that anything is possible. And the reason why we know and believe that is not because we read it in a book. It's because we read it in our lives. We've seen it happen again and again and again and again and again. Anything is possible because Jesus is in the business of taking that which has been broken and shattered and destroyed and redeeming it for something that's good. That's what we're a part of. And so everyone's welcome. Nobody's perfect. And anything is possible. And there's this mixture of the good and the bad and the ugly and the progress and the miracles that are all wrapped up into one spot here at this church and in many other churches all across our city and across our nation, and across our world. That's what our church is all about. And today, we're starting like this brand new series. It's going to talk about this messy life. It's called Wonder Life. 
And this Wonder Life, I'm really indebted uh, and thankful to a man by the name of Mike Foster, who's kind of the, the creator of some of this content that we're going to be talking about over the next uh, five weeks. Uh, and, and, and Mike uses four life posts that we'll start with next week. We'll get into the first one next week. But he uses four life posts that can really help us navigate the messiness and the beautifulness of this life altogether. And really, all of it is based on the teachings of Jesus. Jesus said in John chapter 10, verse 10, he said this, I have come that they may have life and have it to the what? To the full. This is not, I came that they may have physical life. He means I come that they may have this kind of deep, spiritual, overflowing, it's always there, renews all the time life that is always abundant. It's always overflowing. It's always bubbling up. And you're saying, well, James, that sounds great. The problem is I'm not experiencing this life. I'm not experiencing this life. Well, don't misunderstand. Just because Jesus said, I've come that they may have life and have it to the full, doesn't mean that it's a problem-free, pain-free existence. In fact, quite the opposite is true. Because in John chapter 16, verse 33, Jesus says this, Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows. No wonder, Jesus, what is it? Are we going to have life abundantly, life overflowing, or are we going to have like this sucky trial and sorrow ridden life? (laughs) Would you make up your mind? Because honestly, how many of us vote for John 10 10? Yeah, it's like, oh, let's go back a couple chapters, Jesus. Can we just, you know, white out that one in chapter 16? And Jesus has a very realistic outlook on life. There is the really good part of life and there's the really difficult part of life. And it's not a problem-free, pain-free life. The reality is there's this abundance and satisfaction that comes with life. And at the same time, there is sorrow and trial that comes with life. There are are moments of clarity that we have that just all of a sudden get swallowed up by a fog of uncertainty. Haven't you experienced that in life? There's the good and the bad and the ugly, and it's all messed up into one ball. One author says that life is beautiful and brutal. How many of you know that's true? You've experienced the beautiful part of life and then you've you've watched and experienced and witnessed the brutality of life. And I think this is the kind of the perspective that Jesus has. And if you take these two things together, it's not beautiful and brutal, it's brutal. (laughs) Right? It's just this brutal thing that we can celebrate and cry over at the same time. And we find out over time that life doesn't play by the rules, does it? You know, sometimes we're, we're raised to say, hey, if you do A, B, and C, then this is what's going to happen in your life. And so you go off to college, right? And you're kind of messing around and you're trying to figure out what your major is. And then, you know, little ways in, you lock on to the thing that's like, okay, I'm, I'm buckling down. I'm going to do the thing and I'm, I'm going to do the best I can do. And, and so you just, you go, you fly right through and you're just all excited about it. And you graduate with your major and you're, you know, you go out and you start to, you know, interview for jobs and you can't find a job in your field of study or your field of interest and wind up working at some restaurant for the next four years after college. Whoa, 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 that's not supposed to happen. Like, I I played by the rules. I studied hard. I went through all the deals. I got the certification, and then I couldn't find a job. Or you go through college, and you do your major, and you, you know, pour yourself into it, and when everybody else is partying, not you. You're studying by the books, right? You go out, and you're the one who actually lands the dream job right out of college in your field of study, and you're thinking, oh, this is going to be great, and three months into it, you're absolutely miserable. You hate your career. That's not supposed to happen. And now you realize, what do I do now? All my education, all that stuff prepared me for this thing, and I hate it. I'm going to quit and go work at Panera. <laughs> you know? I mean, that, that's, life doesn't work that way. Or, or you're the health nut, right? You're seeing everybody else. They're not taking care of themselves. But not you. No, 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 no. You eat tofu instead of steak. 
You eat all the, you know, all this stuff. You don't have any, because you exercise, you do all the right stuff, and then at, you know, 50 years old, you find out you have heart disease. And you're, you know... 9,000 pound uncle, you know, he's doing just fine, you know, no, no problems at all. You're like, whoa, wait a minute. I did what I was supposed to do. This is not fair. This is this brutal life that we fall into sometimes. And this wonder life that we're going to be talking about over the next couple of weeks, there are really two keys to this wonder life. Like, if you miss these two things that we're going to introduce today, that we're going to talk about today, and then we'll move on uh, next week. But if you miss these two things today, you will experience the brutality of life. When you don't get the keys that we're going to talk about today, and they're not, it's not rocket science, all right? I mean, when I put them up on the screen, you're going to be like, yeah, 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 okay, got it. But when you don't, when you miss these two things, life is utterly brutal. What are the two keys to wonder life? Two keys are this, identity and purpose. Identity and purpose. I'm just telling you, when you don't have this or that, when you don't know who you are or why you're here, life is a total mess. It's a total mess. And I love what Mike Foster writes. I think he just, he nails it when he says this. Right now, you and I live in a unique time when our generation has lost our most precious possession. Now, what in the world is the most precious possession that we have? What's your most precious possession? Here's what he says. Ourselves. We've lost who we are. We don't know who we are. We live in a perpetual identity crisis. And it's perpetual for a lot of different reasons. I mean, I'm just telling you. I mean, I love the information age. I love the digital stuff. You know, everybody's got a phone. Everybody's got, you know, all this information and and the social networking that we have. It's all wonderful. And yet, and yet, and yet, we have no clue who we are. Our value rises and falls on how many followers we have, how many friends we have on social media, how many likes we get, how many times they viewed our video. And when you post something and it doesn't, you know, doesn't get the hits that you think, you just, you just, your, your whole spirit goes down. It's because you have no idea who you are. You're ruled by electronics. You know, you're sitting across, you're going to a, a restaurant and you're sitting across, you're just doing this. And you're actually texting the person sitting right across from you, like, hey, oh, yeah, like, 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 thumbs up, you know. We're, it's a mess, isn't it? I mean, you laugh because you've actually done that before. I don't want the person next to me knowing that I'm saying this to the person across from me. We don't know who we are. I ran smack dab in the middle of this whole identity deal. Back in 2017, I was fortunate enough to have a sabbatical where I had, you know, just an extended period of time for rest and renewal. And so my wife and I, we started off our sabbatical by going to a spiritual director, a counselor, a spiritual counselor. And, uh, and so for three hours a day for two weeks, I mean, this is a lot, right? For three hours a day for two weeks, we went and we uh, talked with our spiritual director. And after about three or four uh, sessions, so about, you know, nine to 12 hours, which is a lot, right? We're in this, and it was really good. It was learning all this kind of stuff. And we were in a good spot, merrily, and, you know. And I remember my spiritual director looking across at me and asking me this question. So he, I, like, I poured out my guts to this guy, right? I've downloaded my whole life, my you know, experience and all this stuff. And we talked before we ever even actually went out uh, to spend the time with him. And so all this information, he, and he, he looks at me and he says, so James, who are you? And I'm like, what do you mean? I'm James. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, like, I know your name, but who are you? What do you mean? Who, who am I? It's a simple question. Who are you? Well, who do you think I am? You know, I, it totally dumbfounded me. I couldn't answer him. And it wasn't a trick question. 
I, I just, I, I thought, I, 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 don't, I don't know. And I, you know. You see, if someone asked you that question, you'd say, let me get my resume out and I'll tell you who I am. You can read all about me right here. That's who I am. Who are you? That's not an easy question to answer, is it? Recently, our family watched uh, the original Mary Poppins. It's a great movie. If you've never watched it, you should go watch it. It was just really, uh, it's just a great movie. Dick Van Dyke and um, uh, Julie Andrews. And, and so, I, you know, I've seen it before many times. And, and so I was just interested in the whole story behind this uh, movie and Julie Andrews. And so I was, you know, I just started doing a little bit of research online about Julie Andrews. And she's got this amazing voice. Uh, when she was just even a little girl, she had a five octave range in her voice. She could sing so high that people couldn't hear, but dogs could, like true story. I mean, that's, that's an amazing thing. And her voice is so effortless you know, just light and just all this. And so it was just a wonderful movie. And, you know, she made The Sound of Music uh, the year after. This is 1964 when uh, Mary Poppins came out. The next year, 1965, The Sound of Music came out. By the way, it is like, uh, uh, it's like in the top five of ticket sales of any movie in the history of movies. It's amazing, right, this movie. And then, and so I was just reading about her career. And then in 1997, she was on Broadway. She had this, you know, decades-long run on Broadway, did all this kinds of stuff but she started getting hoarse and they thought she had nodules or cancer in her throat and so they did a surgery and she didn't have nodules and she didn't have cancer but when the surgery was over she didn't have a voice either she lost her voice and so I, you know I'm, I'm reading all these articles and then I'm doing the YouTube thing right and I'm watching these interviews with her and she's like I lost my voice and it was, it was devastating I, who, who am I without being able to sing because for her, her identity was wrapped up in her voice. But when you take away her voice, who, who is she? When you take away your hobby, who are you? If you take away your family, who, who are you? James, who are you? What do you mean? That's not a trick question. Who are you? Uh, you see, we have an identity crisis. That's a hard question. We have an identity crisis. And here's the thing. If we don't know who we are, how in the world will we ever know what to do? If you don't know who you are, how in the world will you ever know what to do? You see, these two things are tied into each other. And so over the course of the next several weeks, we're going to talk about who are you and why are you here? And it's not going to be something that you're just spoon-fed. We're going to, there's a small group study online. In fact, we've got, some, uh, we've got a, a group for uh, kind of the 20-something crowd, uh, and you know, it's going to be meeting here on the campus during the week, and you can sign up for that if you're interested in, in that. But it's like, who, who am I and, and why am I here? Jesus said, hey, there's good and there's bad and there's all mixed up, but if you don't know who you are, or why you're here, it's going to be really, really brutal. And some of you have gone, you know, you're not in your 20s now. You're, you're way beyond the 20s, and you're still trying to figure out. It's like, I have no idea what I'm doing with my life. That's why we're doing this series. You ought to know. You ought to know who you are and why you've been put on this earth. I love what the psalmist says, Psalm 139. It's David. King David, he was the, uh, the second king in Israel's history. And uh, David was a mixture of good and bad. He was a mixture of great and just really terrible failures, right? An adulterer, a murderer, all kinds of stuff. And yet, and yet, he writes some of the most profound things. And he says this in Psalm 139, verse 13. He says this, he's speaking to God, For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's room. God, you, you've made me. Verse 14, he goes on, he says this. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Fearful means that God took care and he took great honor in creating David. And really, what he did for David, he's done for all of us. There's honor involved in your creation. 
there's dignity involved in God's creation of you. And wonderfully, it just doesn't mean woohoo, it means that there's a purpose, there's a, there's a, there's a designation from your life. That's what it means. So I'm fearfully and wonderfully made, and your works are wonderful. I know that full well. In other words, God, you don't make mistakes. You don't make junk. I mean, I, I, I've messed up my life. I've done all, all things. But I'm just telling you, I know that what you've done in me and what you've created in me is wonderful. Isn't that a great place to be? The, the Apostle Paul says something similar in the New Testament. He says, for we are God's masterpiece. Say masterpiece. masterpiece. Oh, man. You're a work of art. Just turn to somebody next to you and say, hey, did you know I'm a work of art? (laughs) And then you can turn back to that person and say, yeah, I know you're a piece of work. (laughs) For we are God's masterpiece, it says. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things that he has what? He has planned for us. You know what I love about these passages we just read? God made you. And he has a plan for your life. Couldn't be more clear. And that's really the bottom line for today. God created you, and he has a plan for your life. Some of you walked in, and you don't even realize. You're listening online right now, and you're like, God made me? I just thought it was... No, no, you're not an accident. God had an idea when he created you. There's nobody else like you. I mean, somebody may look like you, but they're not you. God created you, he formed you, you are unique. He created you with honor, with dignity. And he has a plan for your life. You don't have to wander through life aimlessly. You don't have to go around like, I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just telling you, God created you and he has a plan for your life. So what are you doing about that? Well, for one, you're here today as we start this series. And the whole point of the series is to help you find out who you are and why you're here. The most two important questions you can ask because they're about your life and they're about your life and God's plan. And so over the next few weeks, we're going to be talking about these life posts that Mike writes about. But here's the thing that I want to do and that I want to leave you with today. Here's the thing that I want you to think about. And I, uh, if you could just, and I know this is simple. I've tried to come up with something more complicated, but I thought, you know what? This is just a time to be simple. Are you, are you good with simple? Here's simple. Here are the two questions I want you to ask this week. Who am I and why am I here? Who am I? I mean, if I weren't married, who am I? Who, if I didn't have any kids, who am I? If I didn't have my career, or if I lost my hobby, or you know, if, my, if I couldn't play sports anymore, who, who am I? If you kind of strip all those things away, who am I? It's hard. I mean, I'm a pastor. I was like, I don't know. What, what, what do you mean, who am I? And I want you to wrestle this question this week. Who am I? Because it's one of the most important questions you can answer. And then the other question. Why am I here? I mean, really, what am I doing? You know how many people go through life thinking that they, you know, they, they've got their deal and they know what they're doing and all of a sudden they get, you know, later in life and they realize I've wasted my whole life. Like I, what I thought was important really isn't important. Some of you have the opportunity to not meet that fate. 
over these next you know, few weeks, you can wrestle these two questions to the ground. And this is, again, I don't want to necessarily spoon feed you. I want to guide you through this in the, in the materials, the book if you want to buy the book, or the study guides on the website if you want to download those. They're going to help you wrestle through these things. There's nothing more important than we could talk about right now than these two things. Who are you and why are you here? And so I want to invite you uh, to this journey that we're on called the Wonder Life. And I want you to be here every week for it. I don't want you to miss it. And some of you, you're thinking, you know what? Oh, man, I wish so-and-so were here. Good news is we really start next week. Today was just the introduction, <laughs> right? Like, I haven't solved any of the questions. Like, I didn't give you any of the answers today. And I, didn't, I was tempted to, but I didn't want to because I want you to wrestle with these things. I want you to wrestle with these things. And I want you to come back next week. And I want you to bring somebody with you, especially if they're in their 20s especially if they're in their 50s. <laughs> they're the most important questions we can ask. Who am I? Why am I here? Let me pray for you. God, um, we're grateful just to like to be here right now and to be faced with this topic, these questions. And Father, I pray for all of us myself included, for people who've been walking with Jesus for years and years and for people who just walked in the doors for the first time today, they haven't been to church in forever. God, would you, just, would you just guide us through this? And as we wrestle with these questions this week, would you just really, you know, it's, a, it's okay to be uncomfortable with it. Would you just kind of guide us through this? Let this be on our mind and our heart all week long. Make us hungry for the answer from you, God. And I pray that you would guide each of us because you've created us. You know who we are. You know how you've wired us. You know the plan that you have for us. And Father, I'm thankful that you have a plan for us. And we're not just random accidents, but that you had intent when you brought all things into existence. So we're grateful for that. And we ask for your help. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.